The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! Run, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. In a small cabin hidden in the mountains about a half mile from the trail that led south from Dawson City, three men sat around a pot-bellied stove. Buck Nelson dominated the other two. The look of cunning in his face contrasted with the weak and small stature of Pete Remus, one of his companions, and the stupid look of the other, Mike Abel. Buck sneered as he listened to the whining voice of Pete. I ain't trying to tell you what to do, Buck, but we got enough money on that last job to quit for a while. If we stay here any longer, the bond to find us. So you're getting yellow, are you, Pete? No, Buck, no, I ain't getting yellow. No, you ain't getting yellow. You've been yellow right from the beginning. Well, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have had a lead on the last man we robbed. The one I played poker with in Dawson. You didn't help much with the robins. I'll say you didn't. The only reason you're any good to us is that nobody would suspect a little sniveling twerp like you to be part of this gang. I'm just being cautious, that's all. We stay in one place too long, the Monty's are going to get us sure as shooting. This hideout is the best we ever had. Every prospect out of Dawson has to go over this mountain pass when he's leaving for the States. And they're all loaded with gold. Nobody can find this cabin. Not with a lookout on the trail. Of course not. With one of us sitting behind that big rock on the trail, we can see who's coming for miles either way. Well, just the same the Monty's know about us. Everybody was talking about these robbers the other night. They said Sergeant Preston was on the case. Him and that dog of his. There's yeah, one man I'd give my right arm to get. Either him or his dog. They're the ones who got Jake, my best pal, three years ago in Whitehorse. Then I shouldn't think he'd want to stay in a territory where Preston's stationed. You wouldn't, you yellow crybaby. Outsmarting Preston is more of a pleasure than the gold we're getting. I'll make a monkey out of him if it takes ten years. <laughs> you already have made a monkey out of him, Buck. Well, I'm not so sure. I wonder where Vic is. You better get your park on, Mike, and go out and take his place in the rock. He'll be cold by now. Sure. It's my turn to take the watch. There's Vic now. Fuck. Fuck. There's a sudden dog team coming up the trail with just one man driving it. And there's nobody else inside for miles, and the sled is loaded. How does the weather look? It's going to snow. It's starting to now. Uh -huh. It looks as if this one is made to order for us. Come on, boys. We'll see what's on this sled. Maybe it's just a prospect to a supplies. And maybe it's a sled full of gold. Come on, you little Welcher. You're not staying behind. All right, Buck, I'm coming. Didn't mean I didn't want to help you. Well, hurry down to the pass. And we're handling this the way we did the others. I'm doing the shooting, and you boys be ready to act when I yell. Come on, hurry up. All right, Buck. Down the trail a short distance, the men stood tense and silent behind some rocks as the dog team and sled approached. Then Buck raised his rifle slowly. I'll take care of him. I'd better give him another for good measure. You got him, Buck. You hit him the first time. Come on, let's get over there. Yeah. Mike, stop that dog here. This man's dead, Buck. Fine. Now, you and Vic put his body on the sled and take it as far as the place we turn off to the hideout. You going to take to the dog to the cabin? Of course now We can't keep him. Cut him loose when we get to the turn off the trail. You and Pete bring everything on the sled up to the cabin and then throw the sled into the ravine. Mike and I will carry this body to the cabin, see if he has a money belt on him or gold sewed in his clothes. Come on, hurry. we got to get everything off this trail before anyone comes. The early darkness was falling and a lantern lighted the cabin where Buck and Mike were searching the clothing of the man they had killed. Ah, he sure wasn't carrying much money. These are funny clothes for a prospector. Hey, here's some papers in his pockets. Hey, give them to me. There's a letter. 
Addressed to Father John Murphy. <sighs> no wonder he isn't carrying any money. He's a priest. A priest? Of all the rotten luck. All that trouble for nothing. Hey, Mike. Come on, Calvin. All right. The rest of the stuff is on the sled. This box is heavy. It's all I could carry. Yeah, I'll give you a hand. <laughs> Put it on the table. Here. I'll get the rest of the stuff. wonder what's in there. Come on, Mike. Let's get that canvas off it. Yeah. It sure was heavy. We'll have it open in a minute. I'll put these fur blankets back here. This is the rest of was on the sled. I got it over the ravine. This box is more interesting than anything else he had on the sled. He's got a cross on it. A cross? A man we shot was a priest. A priest? No. Well, you shouldn't have killed a priest, Buck. What do you think's in the box? It's got a lock on it's it. It's bad luck to kill a priest, Buck. You shouldn't have All killed All right, quit it. your whining. Maybe the key to that lock's in his clothes. I got a quicker way. Hand me that axe. Killing a priest. If the money's Will you keep out. your mouth shut? Here's the axe. Now we'll see how much gold he was carrying. Buck, you hit the cross. You broke it right through the middle. This is the last time I'll tell you to shut up. Look, there's gold in this box. He must have been taking it somewhere. It's probably church money. <laughs> Not anymore, it isn't. Ah, this is the best haul we've made. We should have taken the money and let him go. Killing the priest. I suppose we should let him bring the Mounties right back here to our high. But it's bad luck, I tell you. I tell you to keep your mouth shut, don't I? Or maybe this will help you. No. Now get up. Get up here, yellow pup. You and Vic are taking that body out and burning it. All right, Buck. I didn't mean nothing. I'll do it. Hurry up about it. Come on, Vic. Sure. You take his feet. Get those bags of gold out of there, Mike. Yeah. Divide that stuff right now. It's hot in here. I'm going to take my park off. Hey, there's nine bags of it. Nine bags, huh? Kind of hard to divide four ways. Be a lot easier to divide it three ways, wouldn't it? What do you mean? I mean I'm getting rid of Pete and that canary-colored streak up his back. I'm sick of him. You mean you're going to kill him? No, I'm just going to kick him out. But he might tell the Mounties about this hideout. <laughs> he can't do it. Not without putting a noose around his own neck. He's been in on two other killings, remember? <laughs> I don't see why you worry about killing him. You sure never bothered about those others. I know, but Pete's always been around. He's he's always doing things for me. I hate the little twerp, but I, I don't want to kill him. We'll send him packing tomorrow. The following day, the new fallen snow reflected the bright sun shining from a cloudless sky. But inside the cabin... Pete sensed something ominous as he nervously cleared away the breakfast dishes. Uh, I'll clear this table, Buck. You want some more tea? Put those dishes down. What? You're getting out of here. Buck, you don't know what you're saying. You mean you're throwing him out, Buck? Yeah, that's just what I mean. But, Buck, why? I've been with you for so long, you know I'll do anything for you. Yeah, yellow, that's why. No, I, I ain't, Buck. I, I just got excited about killing a priest and... Seeing you hit that box with an axe and hitting a cross like that. I... <laughs> Golly, Buck, I... I'm just scared, I guess. You're always scared of something. Now get your parka on and get uh, Buck, please. I'll do anything for you if you let me stay honest, Buck. I, I won't ever say nothing again. I'll do anything. Mike. Mike, tell him to let me stay, Mike. Quit being a crybaby and do what Buck says. And don't get any fancy ideas about your share of the church money. <laughs> we wouldn't want it to bring you any bad luck. How can you say I'm yellow, Buck? You were there when I shot the prospector two weeks ago. I did it just like you told me to. Yeah, and you shook so bad I almost had to hold the gun for you. And you didn't stop shaking for a week. And just in case you get any ideas about telling the Mounties where this hideout is and collecting the reward for Buck Nelson, just remember that killing... And remember how it'll put a rope around your neck. You know I'd never tell where you were, Buck. See that you don't. 
Now, get out. Oh, but please. Mike, you follow him to the trail, and if he turns back this way, shoot oh, him. But please, won't get you give me a... Get on and get out of here before I lose my temper. Don't bother to pack anything. Just get out fast. I can't stand the sight of you. All right, Buck. I'll go. And if you should happen to see our friend Sergeant Preston, you might tell him that someday I'm going to get him and that fancy dog of his. <laughs> Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was driving his dog team along the trail when he suddenly noticed a man floundering about aimlessly in circles off the trail. Then the Mountie heard his cry. Help! Help me! Help! What's the team, boy? Stay here, King. Putting on his snowshoes, the Mountie soon reached the man who was waist high in the deep snow. Help me! Help! I'm coming. What's wrong with you? I can't see. I'm snow blind. I got off the trail. Snow blind? And you're out here all alone? Or where'd you come from? What? The mountains. I don't know where I am. I, I forgot my sun goggles and his sun. You couldn't help but go snow blind on a day like this without your goggles here. I'll take your arm and get you back to the trail. Are we far from the trail? No, not very. You've been going around in circles. What time is it? Late afternoon. Where do you live? I'm on my way to Selkirk. Selkirk? You can't get to Selkirk without a dog team. You haven't even got a pack. I lost it somewhere after I went blind. Oh. You had anything to eat? Not since breakfast. Is that your dog team? Yes, it is. Are you going south? No, I have to go north of here to an Indian village, but it's too far for you to go. You're half frozen and your eyes need attention. But I can't see. I can't go out alone. There's a roadhouse on the trail a couple of miles from here. Uh, you can go there. You mean you, you take me back? Well, I know I can't do that. It would take too much time. But I can send my lead dog back with you. I won't need him. I may be back late tomorrow night. I can pick him up then. You sure you know where to take me? Oh, yes. He knows Jim Taylor's name. He'll know what I mean. Now, you better sit down and rest. I'll bind up your eyes. Yeah. It's a good thing you came along. Who are you? Why, uh, my name's Bill. This dog he is must be plenty smarter. He'll take me back to that roadhouse all alone. He will if I tell him to. There. Now keep that scarf around your eyes. Yeah. When you get to the roadhouse, Jim Taylor will fix them for you. Why didn't you say you'd be back to pick up the dog? Well, I'll try and get back tomorrow night. You'll be better by tomorrow, so if you don't feel too weak, you can go ahead wherever you're going. Just leave King with Jim. Is that his name? The dogs, I mean, King? Yes. <laughs> oh, we weren't calling you yet, old boy. Seems to me I, I've heard about a dog named King. Well, lots of dogs are called that. Now I'll give you something to eat before you start out. You'll remember to leave King with Jim, won't you? Oh, sure. I'll leave him there. Don't worry. Pete's heart beat fast with excitement as he stumbled along the trail after the big dog. If only his eyes got better in time, he could find out at the roadhouse if this were the dog he thought it was. King didn't like to leave his master, but he was trained to obey him. So he led the way dutifully to the door of Jim Taylor's roadhouse. Here we made it. Now if I can find the door. Hello, who is it? Is this Jim Taylor's roadhouse? Yes, come in. But I can't... Oh, wait. I'll help you. Something's wrong with your eyes. It's dark. I couldn't see you. Come in. Come in. I'm snow blind. I'll be all right pretty soon. Why, this is King. You must have met Sergeant Preston. Didn't he come back with you? Sergeant Preston? Yes, King here is his lead dog. Oh. Oh, Sergeant Preston, the money. Oh, yes, sure, I met him. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, Sit down here. You must be tired. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, I am tired. Went blind, lost my pack. Person found me. Yeah, you were lucky. He was in a hurry to get up to the Indian village, or I'm sure he'd have brought you back. Yeah, that's why he sent the dog. Well, King is just as good as a man. Are you going to meet Preston back here? Uh, no, he, uh, he said he was going straight back to Dawson City. He said to bring King back there when my eyes were better. I'll fix your eyes for you. They'll be better by tomorrow morning. I hope so. And after I fixed them, you better have some supper. It was early the following morning that Pete left the roadhouse with King on leash. The big dog was puzzled about Pete, 
as he no longer had to lead him. But his master had told him not to leave this man, so he trotted along obediently. As Pete made his way back toward the mountain hideout, he remembered Buck's words. Sergeant Preston. Yeah. There's one man I'd give my right arm to get. Either him or his dog. Yeah, the dog. Outsmarting Preston is more of a pleasure than the gold we're getting. <laughs> now he'll take me back with him. Now Buck won't think I'm yellow. Keep right on going, King. But we're making a wide circle. I'm not taking a chance on crossing that Monty's trail. Not a chance, King. Darkness was approaching as Pete went up the secret trail to the cabin hideout. Mike came out of the cabin door. Pete, what are you doing here? Is Buck in the cabin? No, he's up in the lookout. He and Vic. I got to put this dog in the cabin quick. <laughs> Where'd you get that? I'll tell you in a minute. All right, King, go on in. Preston's coming soon. Hey, we got it. Why are you doing that? Whose dog is it? You'll be surprised when I tell you. Oh, here comes Buck now. Thought I told you to get out and stay out. Why'd you come back here? I think you're going to change your mind about me, Buck. You're lucky we didn't plug you. Vic and I watched you coming up the trail. What'd you do with the dog you had? He's in the cabin. I, uh... Brought him back to give to you for a present. Listen, you fool. Take that cur and get out of here. If Vic hadn't argued with me, I'd have sent a bullet through you for coming back. Buck. You, uh... You said you'd give your right arm to get Sergeant Preston. Or his dog. Sergeant... You mean that's his dog? It sure is. It's King. I don't believe it. That is King. Listen to him. Guess he's figured out he's been trapped. No, you can't say I'm yellow, Buck. But the Mountie, where is he? He'll trail you up here. Did you steal that dog? No. I went snow blind. I met the Mountie. Let me have King to lead me back to a roadhouse because he was in a hurry to get somewhere. He can't trail me here because the trail's packed hard. We didn't leave any tracks. I've been waiting for this. I'll put a bullet in that cur and we won't have to worry too much about Preston for a while. He'll spend his time looking for his dog, not for us. He's a fine dog. Maybe we could keep him and sell him when we get over the border. Are you loco? No. This is a chance I've been waiting for. I'm going to plug him right now. I'll get the dog now, and someday I'll get Preston. King knew he was trapped. He sensed danger in the cabin as he heard the rough voices of the men outside and smelled the blood on the floor where the priest's body had lain. He looked frantically for an escape, and then as the footsteps approached and the handle turned on the door, he saw the small opening of a window high above his head. As the door opened, King leaped. Keep it out the window! Go around the cabin, Buck! I'll get him! The great dog raced down the slope behind the cabin toward the ravine. He heard the whine of a bullet close to his head, and then suddenly, a sharp, stinging pain in his shoulder. He stumbled and reeled with the shock of it, and then rolled over and over down the steep slope to the ravine below. As he lay there half-stunned, he heard the exultant voice of Pete echoing from above. You got him, Buck! You got him! He rolled over and over! I saw it! Painfully, the big gray dog dragged himself to his feet. Bruised and shaken, he made his way slowly toward a small cave nearby. A white hot pain shot through his side, and he left a trail of blood on the white snow. It was later that night when Sergeant Preston got back to Jim Taylor's roadhouse. Jim, you here? That you, Preston? Yes. Came back to pick up King. King? But he's gone. He isn't here. What? Didn't the man bring him here and leave him? The man was snow blind? He must have misunderstood you. He said you told him to bring King back to Dawson to the police barracks. But he didn't know who I was. I didn't tell him I was a Mountie and he couldn't see. I purposely didn't tell him. But why? Too many people are anxious to get King away from me, Jim. I told this man to leave King here with you. Oh, Sergeant, it's all my fault. I asked him if he'd met you. That's oh. how he found out the dog was yours. He couldn't have taken King away from here for any other reason except to kill him or steal him. Oh, Sergeant, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I better get back to Dawson. If King gets away, that's where he'll come. Don't you think you'd better wait till morning? No, there's a bright moon. Well, don't worry about it, Jim. It wasn't your fault. I'll start for Dawson right away. 
King lay quietly in the cave, licking his wounds. The bright moonlight cast black shadows on the snow in the ravine. Suddenly, the form of a wolf emerged from one of them. His nose sniffed the air as the smell of fresh blood drifted to him. He was lean and hungry, and he followed the scent until he came to the trail of blood in the snow. It was then that he threw back his head, and a long howl broke the stillness. King in the small cave at the side of the ravine lifted his head at the sound. A low growl rumbled in his throat, and the fur on his back rose as he crouched, waiting, the pain of his wound forgotten with this new danger that faced him. He waited silently, his ears pricked forward, and then he saw the shadow of the wolf before the cave. Gathering every bit of his remaining strength, he launched forward quickly. His jaws clamped on the throat of the wolf, and they rolled, snarling in a heap. The wolf tried frantically to rid himself of the iron jaws choking out his life. He thrashed about wildly, throwing the great dog from side to side. But King held on. Gradually, the wolf grew weaker. And then, everything was still. King's jaws loosened. And too weak to move, he lay quietly beside the lifeless gray body. two days, Sergeant Preston has searched for King. Night had fallen, and the Mounties sat before the stove in his cabin at the barracks in Dawson City. He was lonely and depressed, and avoided his fellow officers, who wisely left him alone with his trouble. He was startled when suddenly there was a knock at his door. Oh, uh, come in. Hello, Sergeant. Any news of King? Hello, Pat. No, there's no news. I'm afraid it's no use. Well, we'll form a searching party. There's not a man among us that don't owe something to that animal. I'm afraid it's no use, Pat. If King were alive, he'd get back to me somehow. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. Did you come here for anything special, Pat? Sure, Sergeant. Hate to add to your troubles, but we're worried about fa uh, Father Murphy. He was due here two days ago and he ain't showed up. Father Murphy? Uh, they're moving up here from Bear Landing to the new mission. Just been built here. Oh, yes, I know about that. It wasn't very far, and he was bringing the church funds himself. Uh-huh. Of course, maybe something delayed him, and he'll show up tomorrow. Uh, uh, Pat, did you hear something, or am I just imagining it? It's King. That's his bark. Pat, it's King. King, old fella, you got back. Glory, oh, King. Oh, King, come here, boy. Let me look at you. Yeah, he's got oh. dry blood all over him. Look at his chest. Yes, his head's cut. He's been shot. Bullet grazed his sides. Quite a deep wound. Poor fella. This blood here on his chest, I guess that's that. Uh, some other animal. He must have fought with something. Who would shoot King, do you suppose? If I find out, I pity him. Let's have a look at you, fella. Poor King. Now hold still, boy. Well, you've done a pretty good job of fixing this wound yourself. Kept it clean by licking it. Easy, fella. These cuts on his head need attention, though. Lie down, old boy. You're tired out. Easy. Let me get some of the boys together, Sergeant. We'll get the devils that did this. I'll have to fix these cuts on King, and he's going to need rest. We'll have to take him with us. He'll show us how to get back to the place where he was hurt. I think if he rests all night, he'll be able to go. Is there any sign of snow, Pat? Uh, no, there's not a cloud in the sky. Then we'll wait till morning so King can rest. There's just a chance we can backtrack, King, and find the people responsible for this. I'll round up some of the boys. They'll all want to do it. You know, uh, there's a reason someone would try to get King. This may be the gang of men we've been after, Pat. The men committing the robberies in the mountains. Maybe they got Father Murphy. Get the boys together if you want to and tell them to come armed. We may have a fight on our hands. The following morning, Pat and two other men went with Sergeant Preston as they backtracked King. The great dog seemed to know where his master was going and led the men back the way he had come. It was afternoon when they finally reached the ravine after a difficult trip cross country. Look, boys, here in front of this cave. It's a wolf. This is what King fought. Must have tried to kill him after he was shot. It's a big one, too. King must have holed up here for a day or two until he was strong enough to travel. Look, Sergeant, up that slope. Oh. Something's rolled down it. Look at the snow. Well, that must have been where King was shot. 
Think we can get up there? Sure. That ain't steep. All right, boys, come on. Come along, King. As the men reached the top of the slope, they hid behind some fir trees when they saw the cabin hidden in a hollow. Uh, here's the hideout they're looking for. It's back from the trail. They must have lookouts watching the trail from the other side of it. I wonder if anyone's in the cabin now. Pat, you take the boys and circle around. See if you can find the place overlooking the trail. I'll take King and go to the cabin. Keep under cover of the trees if possible. If we find anyone watching the trail, we'll take care of him. Come back to the cabin afterwards. Come on, boys. Right, sir. We'll get him down. Quiet, King. Quiet, boy. This way, fella. We'll go around to the door. Oh, nobody here. I guess we'll just stay here and wait. It was a short time later that Sergeant Preston heard footsteps approaching. King whined and wagged his tail so the sergeant knew it was Pat. Sergeant Preston, you all right? Yes, there was nobody here. Well, we got two men sitting behind some rocks overlooking the trail. Oh. The boys are tying them up and gagging them. We heard them say something about someone called Buck who's coming up the trail. He and another man are probably coming here. That's fine, Pat. I'll be quiet and stand beside the door there in the shadows. I found something in this cabin, and I think these are the men we're after. Here, King. Beside me, fella. Quiet, King. Quiet, boy. Someone's coming. Got my Yeah, I got it. We better get Mike and Vic down here from the lookout post. Probably freezing. I will, Susan. Put up your hands. You're covered. Why, you Preston? And that dog, I thought you shot him. You're not taking me alive, you tin horn. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm murdering thief. What, you should... Keep this man covered, Pat. Get up, Buck. If that's your name. Yeah, he hit his head when he fell. He's knocked out. Buck. Oh. He hit his head on this box. Uh, on the box? Keep still, you, and keep your hands up. He's dead. He hit his temple on the corner of it. I told him it was bad. Look, now it's killed him. What's the matter with you? What are you talking about? The box. The box with the cross on it. Sergeant Preston, do you think Father... Yes, be... Pat, I do. That's what I meant when I said I found something in this cabin. This box belonged to a church. I didn't want Buck to kill him. We didn't know he was a priest. A dirty rat. Buck killed Father Murphy? Yes, yes. Now... Now the box killed him. You're under arrest for robbery and murder. Pat... You take care of this body while I go and get the other two members of the gang? Sure, Sergeant. What's your name? Pete. But, but Sergeant... You were all a part of it, and you're all equally guilty. Come along, we'll pick up the others. Watch him, King. <laughs> yes, King. Thanks to you, this case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon is a copyrighted feature originated by George W. Trendle and brought to you each week at this time. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. The part of Sergeant Preston was played by Paul Sutton. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Out of the frying pan into the fire. That's a saying that can readily apply to John J. Malone the hero of ABC's Saturday night thriller, Murder and Mr. Malone. This fabulous lawyer and criminologist, whose favorite hobby is playing detective, no sooner gets himself disentangled than he becomes involved in another grisly mystery adventure. Blackmails, beatings, and bad characters. They are three Bs not uncommon in the life of Mr. Malone. And speaking of characters, Malone meets up with many. Every case he goes on is different. And everyone is crowded with minute after minute of thrilling adventure, suspense, and intrigue. For a radio show that mixes crime busting with one of the cleverest criminal lawyers around town, be on hand for Murder and Mr. Malone. On the air tonight, over most of these same ABC stations. This is...